This is a. These are both AC Fairbanks. Yeah. And, oh, absolutely. And and you can tell uh, the this one here is an early one simply because it has a uh, ivory tailpiece. Ivory tailpiece, and the tuners are all ivory, hand carved ivory. Yeah. And so those are kind of in, were inspirations in the day. Right. I, I just love those. And to, and to think that those craftsmen back there didn't have Dremel tools and things yeah. that I worked with. I know. They did it all by hand. It's just hard to imagine. I would have loved to be able to be there to see how they did it. Yeah. yeah. It, it was so interesting. And but, it was such an industry in the day. You know, back before um, magnify musical sound, there was a huge competition among banjo makers to make a banjo that could be heard over the sound of, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 dance people in a, in a uh, you know. And um, so they came out with such interesting innovations. Uh, I've got that picture in my living room. That one there. Is that the same one we got, right? Yeah, the that's the one they got hanging up in the house, but the one that we have in the house is a reproduction, of course. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, rig, the original Henry Owasa Tanner one is in uh, Virginia, Virginia, Virginia. In Hampton wow. University in Virginia. So. Hampton, Virginia? Mm -hmm. Wow. That picture this one here. That's where my son lives. Uh, is yeah. he living in Hampton? Yep. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Oh, you'll have to check it out. <laughs> yep. yep. Lula Bell and Scotty. And that's uh, Mother Maybell Carter and Sarah and Peyton Carter. Wow. It's like a museum. It is just amazing. And there's so much to look at and so much to see. Yeah, I know. I had a gal come in here one time. She lived in Middleville. And she saw all my pictures and she went. She gave me this photo right here, and she said that one of these ladies in this guitar band was her great aunt. Wow. But she said she had the picture so long, I can't remember which one it was. Uh, so she gave it to me for my museum. Isn't that and, uh, something? Yeah. But, but these old <laughs> photos are, you know, they're getting to the point where they're extremely hard to find. Oh, so that one that you're looking at right here. Right. These, the, their uh, family came out to, to meet me because I had bought this picture off of eBay and they, mm -hmm. just, I must, must be a bit against them, they didn't know it. Yeah. And I know. Oh, they yeah. didn't get it. Uh -huh. And so they well, came out to the yeah, house you know, to see this picture. Wow. So I, I made stuff. copies of it for them and enough. gave them all the information that was on eBay so uh -huh. they could take it home. I mean, even the Halloween. Wow. Wow. That's just amazing. There's some more over here too, Richard, if you come around the corner. <coughs> you know this is such a historically accurate picture because in all the movies they're always riding around playing a guitar. Right. But in reality, yeah. If you if you set out on a horse and headed out west with a guitar on your back, the sun would bleach it and it would warp and then it would rain on it and right. the thing would fall to pieces. Whereas right. a banjo was yeah, rugged enough. It, it might sag for a day or two, but yeah. that was in good shape. And if the head did bust, you'd go kill a small animal and skin right. it and string it and keep on Back going. It was an instrument that li people literally carried with them when they went to fight the Civil War. And that soldiers would, you know, go through the bodies after a big battle and find banjos and pick them up and take them with them. And if you look at this one here up on your far right at the top, where it says Middleville Lions Club Minstrels, that was the high school that I went to, and they used to do blackface shows back when I was a kid. Do you have a minstrel? Now, of course, they don't all that. I don't think we did the blackface. But I always, I always praised the blacks because they were actually the ones who introduced the banjo to the white people here in the United States. So really? if it wasn't for the black people, we would have yeah. missed out on that. That's where totally. we started. Exactly. So, you know, I, I always, this, this is one of my favorite pictures too. Right? 
because that's typical of a, of a vaudeville type yep. uh, show. Yep. He's playing a real early yep. banjo. That's fretless? Fretless. Yeah. And that's another thing is when you see the Civil War banjos, if you ever see a picture of a Civil War banjo with frets on it, it's not a original yeah. picture because well, they actually, weren't fretted before. Well, actually, a lot of those banjos like his, they fretted later. Yeah, oh yeah. They, they, they actually took them and, and had somebody lay out the frets. But the early ones didn't have frets at all. Right. Which is so amazing because I can't hardly play one that has frets. And then yeah. how did they learn? Well, it's funny. It's um, like a violin, though, doesn't I right. mean, jellos. I mean, they have right. like, how mm -hmm. do you know where the heck I'm I think that, uh, I think that after you play for so long, the challenge of playing without friends becomes interesting. Uh, George, the guy that got me started playing the fly hammer, switched over to fretless. Mm -hmm. And he said it's like playing a banjo without the speed bones, which is kind of, oh. kind of, <laughs> kind of yeah. I, uh, I, I started out doing two but I, I had We ought to just sit down and just do a little uh, yeah, messing know, around I, together I know, I need uh, before to, I leave. I need just to, to um, just to play with it, because well, time is in the essence for me. You know, it's just uh, I just don't get the time to practice like I should. I'm sure I, I can remember my chords and all that kind of stuff from uh, like style. I, I love the style. I just, I just think it has more rhythm. And, our daughter, more plus. Story. She loved our daughter.